Hi there, I'm Wade. Welcome to AI Under the Hood, LLM Integration. We have invested heavily in making AI available in FileMaker to help get values from your data in FileMaker databases. It has been done in the way that you would expect it from Claire's and from Apple. It's easy to use and integrated just where needs it. The feature I'm going to show you in the section are not final, primarily for ETS. Your feedback and critics are valuable to us. Please share your thoughts with us. Here are some key takeaways for the section. First, you will know how to chat with the database, just similar to chat GPT. And you will know what an embedding vector is and how to get embedding vectors from LLM to finding the databases. We support both binary format and text format. With embedding vectors, you will be able to do new innovative solutions not possible before. So you will know how to do semantic search. Semantic search actually is based on the embedding vector and with cosine similarity. And so semantic search performs search based on the meaning of natural language besides the keyword search or regular expression you can have today. Then you will know how to do retrieval augmented generation, the so-called RAG. Simply put, that's you can chat with document besides check, check, check with database. So here is a high-level high overview of architecture we have enhanced to make the LLM integration. First, we build an add-on called App Assistant to help you to chat with the database. So it, the add-on using the stuff you're familiar with, HTML, JavaScript, uh, FileMaker script step, and the FileMaker calculation formulas. So it could be a good starting point for you, and you can customize if you need. And we build a whole new set of uh, the FileMaker script step to support LLM integration, along with the calculation functions. Inside the Draco database engine, we have built an LLM, LLM access layer to encapsulate those common protocol and functionalities inside. And we use a handle approach. Most of you probably familiar with the ESS feature we introduced maybe 15 years ago. So the, remember we have, a, we can talk to the, uh, you can integrate with uh, other DBMs like uh, Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server. So we have a handle inside database engine. So we use a similar approach here. So we build a GT GTP handle inside it to talk to the OpenAI GPT, that's a GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4, GTP 1106, uh, up your, cho to your choice. And we build Anthropic handle to talk to Anthrop Anthropic for the cloud, the LLM. And we build the open source handle so to allow you to talk to open source LLM if you choose to kind of set up your, your own LLM server. Yeah. So underneath it, we also enhance other modules uh, to support it. For example, in the SQL, the SQL module, we improve in the SQL parser and we add, we add uh, the DDL, the data definition language there to encapsulate the, encapsulate the schema that's needed to send to LLM. The reason you need a DDL is to check, to support chat with database. We need to let LLM know what kind of your miniature schema is. So then LLM will be able to generate correct SQL statement for corresponding to the user's natural language prompt. Uh, so later I will go through some detail about the DDL. Uh, but in, in the way, you just needed to do some a little bit things. And, and the, the, the heavy lifting actually done, will be done by the Jericho database engine for you. Uh, so we support the uh, embedding vectors. Uh, so most of you are probably familiar with the search index, sort index, the Jericho database engine has for years. So embedded vector actually in certain way you can think that's just a similar, just another kind of index. But this index actually is based on the natural language meaning. Yeah. And, but the dimension is much, much higher. 
and we we yes support for the LLM account. Uh, so each one has the endpoint access endpoint point of the uh, LLM server, and including your API access token. And so in Draco database engine, you can have a multiple LLM account running at at, the, at one time. If if you like to. So with that, the, then the Joico database engine will be able to allow you to talk to OpenAI LLM or Anthropic LLM or open source LLM, or you want to have some of them access at the same time. And once you build a solution, it will be, avail will be able to run on FileMaker Pro, Go, WebDirect, Script Engine, Data API, or even Cloud, uh, if applicable. And we, we make that the cross platform on the OS we support, Mac OS, iOS, Windows, and Ubuntu. So now I'm going to show, show you a quick demo to chat with the database. What you see is, uh, is a familiar FileMaker Pro with the contact database. So the, the app assistant is the add-on. So this, this, this modified the record. So I have a Jangdo here. So Jangdo just recently promoted. So I update it to new title direct and, and let's check the app assistant setting. Uh, so I'm going to talk to the GPT-4 with my API key. And in the action, I need to select query. Yeah. So because I want to check with database, I want to set scope of database only. So don't worry about the option. I will go through detail with you. Uh, Okay, so now I have a setting I want. I, I double check, I have everything for Jangdo. Jangdo work for ACME. I have a phone number, email, and, and so on. Then I click the app assistant, it pop up the, the, the window. So I start asking question, what company does Jangdo work for? So it, it shut with database, get to the ACME. I, start, I continue to ask what's the position. So remember, I update to director. If I direct, I keep asking email. Pay attention, I don't need to ask what's Zhangdo's position or what's Zhangdo email. I understand I'm talking, I'm asking for Zhangdo, not for Peter, not for Mary. Yeah. So and now I want to show you the DDL. So now if you want to debug or you're curious, you can, can repeat the question. Now you see this is the data definition language which Draco database engine generally for you sent to LLM. So you can see that that's using the industrial standard uh, SQL statement. And we also have a including history. So you can use that OD log, so we including message response and the token used. And about who did that on what time. And if, and for admin, if you want to delete it, delete it, it definitely can delete it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a quick demo we chat, chat with database. So you can chat with database and you also can debug it to see the detail, to see the SQL. <laughs> Thank you. So now take, let's take a look at some settings of the app assistant. So from the top, the account name, account name you can specify any account name you like. And the model you specify, not model, because I'm talking to OpenAI, I'm using GPT-4, so I just type GTP-4. That is case sensitive and also need the, the minus in between. Yeah. And the endpoint is well known, so I, you don't need to, to, to enter it. We know that, so we can handle the endpoint for you, but you do need to enter your, your API key. And actions, there are five actions available for you to choose. What you just saw is dump DDL. You can also choose dump SQL if you are curious about what SQL got, got sent from LLM to, to FileMaker Draco database engine. Now, if uh, some people make uh, some complicated prompt, prompt, sometimes could be more than one SQL. So if, if there is one SQL, you dump SQL, you will see one. If there are more than one, it will give you all the SQL we have been exercised. Now, Option now means you don't want, you don't want to do chat with the database. You just want to do like a chat GTP like, or you want to do the RAG, the data I will show you the chat with document. And the next two, one is a query, one, another one is a low query. So the difference of these two, these two are both for chat with database. The difference is that the low query primarily just 
give you the results directly from Draco database engine. Okay. And clearly, we are sending that result to LLM to format it, it with natural language. Yeah. So that's up to you which one you want. Yeah. The scope has uh, two options. Now, one is database only, the other one is uh, non limit yeah. So as, he, as we all know, the LLM is powerful. However, LLM has a tendency of hallucination. So if you design a solution, you don't like hallucination. You want to limit your user only to the database, the chat wing database. You can pick the database only. Yeah, so we try to cut out when the hallucination. Stream mode has two, two modes, on or off. So if you pick on, it will send the data output continuously to the UI. Uh, so the, so instead of the, the user waiting there, because sometimes the LLM take a long time to process in. So if you use a, a stream off, the user sometimes will see the beach ball keep running there 30 minutes, one minute. <laughs> yeah. So in general speaking, the, the stream on, if you expect the long output, the, the, it's more user friendly. Sliding window three means it will send the three prior completion, prior prompt and completion pair besides the current prompt. Uh, so that's the way to let it keep a context. And, and I, I think some of you might ask me a question, say, why you pick three? Yeah, well, what's the optimal number? So, so here is, uh, uh, I don't know the optimal number for all solutions. So for, for now, just let you pick. Maybe that time we can find some suitable optimized solution. And so right now, let you pick. Uh, one reason is the more you send over to, to the LLM, they will charge more on, on based on tokens. And, and also the, the thing is the more you send over, the process time is longer. Right. Uh, so, so here, the, the demo I show you basically I use the three. On the, on, on the left hand side, the query, query table, you see there are four table occurrences. So the data, the Draco database engine will give you the list. It, it check the, it check the engine and find out how many table occurrences you have. And so we are putting out, out here. What you need to do, just need to put the checkbox on the, those you need. And I would recommend you only pick the minimum set, right? So the reason is the, the first, again, the LLM, I assume you use, you use the one near charge, not your own free, free one. So they charge you by token. The second thing is the more you send, the more stuff you send over, it takes a long time to process. And if not, not necessary, why you want to do that? Right. And another thing, another consideration, some of you, the schema might be, might be have some IP concern, right? So you don't want to really send too much, right? Mm. And the low part of custom instruction, you can use it for prompt engineering if you need. So you can put the actual instruction or put some example. The, uh, so one shot on the, on the many shot. Uh, so in here, we, the gray out text have some kind of example you can try out. Uh, and if you have some actual, I, actually in the early ETS, I saw some people uh, make a very good use of it and uh, have uh, some great results. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about DDL. Yeah. So first, what you need, what you need to change is you need to pick the necessary tables. Yeah. And just like I put the checkbox uh, over, you pick those you need. And also inside the table, you need to choose the necessary field. Now, you have option. If you don't choose, then the DDL will send all the field of your table over. And and I saw some people's solution, some table have more than 100 fields. <laughs> so that would be not a good idea to do that. So, so to, to choose the, the necessary field, so you, you can add, go through this field annotation. Let me show you the screenshot. So here is a screenshot from the, the managed database. So I have, I have this KF underscore player. So in the, in the common field, I put this bracket, LLM bracket tag yeah, to let DDL understand I want to include this field into the DDL uh, for this table. So once you add one, you, the DDL will just follow your instruction. So if you put only one, it's just one. If you put a 10, it will, put, it will include 10. 
and and whatever annotation you put after the bracket l l m bracket okay, that the annotation we are send as a comment along with inside the ddl so the purpose for that one is to let l l m understand what you mean for this field the minimum schema consider the the people can create whatever name in there and sometimes maybe not, not really that makes sense so or could be confusing so so that that the the text whatever you put in here the, this the llm very good in natural language so you put a good annotation there the llm help llm make correct decision so let me show you another example in here in the i have a, a calculate calculate calculation field score. This score basically, basically calculate the, the best basketball score of a quarter. So you can see the calculation is sum up all the three pointers, two pointers, and three throws. Uh, so you can include in calculation field uh, for DDL. Uh, and the same, I put the bracket LN bracket in there, and I put the annotation scores of a quarter. And a game has uh, several quarters. So so that, that, that's very important here to let LLM know that. Yeah. So, because this is a one too many relationship, particularly in this, in this solution. Again, sometimes it has three quarters, sometimes four quarters, sometimes six quarters. Well, don't, don't ask me why. That, that's not my database. <laughs> but however, once you put, once you put this annotation there, that, and send it to, to LLM, LLM can, generate correct aggregation SQL statement. And regardless of how many quarters you have for your game, it will give you a correct result. Okay, so here are some tips that for the, that to have a good DDL. So first, uh, add the bracket LLM and bracket tag in the field comment along with the short description. and. Then this short description actually is for LLM to understand the meaning of your field and the schema of your field. So if you, if you don't do this, that not might still work, but the, the, the thing is that remember, it will send all your field for the table over. <laughs> and the, the second one is a specified primary key and the foreign key. So this is for the relationship. So if you get the, if you, if you run your solution to check with database and you find out you have relationship and you find out the, the result is incorrect. And when you dump the SQL, you see a lot of nested, nested SQLs, but potentially it, because of this one done space are right. So when the, when the, especially like GPT, when we test it, if you're not sure about the, the, primary key, foreign key relationship, it has a tendency to generate nested, nested SQL. Uh, so nested SQL, sometimes you still get correct results, but on the other hand, the, as you know, the nested SQL is more expensive than joint SQL in general. Uh, and describe the relationship one-to-one -one or one-to-many. Uh, technically speaking, one-to-one -one is the default one. You don't need to specify that unless, say, in the schema, it could be confusing. And if you have one too many relationship, please specify that. Now, the example I showed you before, I specify one too many in the scores field. Now, you can specify that in the foreign key as well. If you specify foreign key, it basically, the LM will understand for this chart table actually one too many. Now, again, have a, the multiple quarter, quarters. And avoid the field name fields with the same name. For different table in for the the one DDL, uh, uh, think about this. That this potential, if you say <laughs> you have schema like a lot, that that's also confusing to human being. I can see that when you in, in discussion in the meeting, right? And then there are several table have the same field name. Then when people asking about here, then which one, which one? So the same thing that if you do have a lot, the the LLM potentially can be confused. And this all valid item for field with a value list associated. So if you have very specific uh, the value list item uh, for a particular field, and, and if you can list that uh, in the annotation, that will really help uh, in LLM to make a good decision to, to generate correct SQL statement for, you, for the user's prompt. 
and don't include the summary field. As you know, the five bank summary field working on fund set. And LLM, very difficult, if, if say not impossible, <laughs> to figure out which fund set for your summary field. On the other hand, if you specify clearly the foreign, the key foreign key, basic parent child relationship, and you specify the one to one, one to many clearly, no, in most of, most of cases, the LLM will be able to generate good aggregation fun function for you to get the, 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 the same kind of summary you need. So, so another thing is, is um, to chat with to use the chat database with the LLM. In general speaking, the if your database schema is normalized, that's 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 work better with the LLM. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the the LLM prompt script step. Yeah. So the this script step is the the, the 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 primary one to check with database. The app assist app system basically call this script step to to perform it. And to use the LLM prompt, you need to to call set LLM account script step first. Uh, so the example I give here is I call, I have a set LLM account. The first parameter is account name. And just like an app assistant. And second parameter specified the provider is OpenAI. And third parameter, uh, the, I have my, my API key. So once you execute this uh, script step, the, the, in this account information will go into the hash table of Dr Draco database engine. Yeah, so you just need to set it once for the lifespan of Dr Draco database. And the data, the data script step can just refer to the account. Yeah. And here is an example of LLM prompt script step. Uh, so you can see the first uh, first parameter account point to GPT, which was set before. And second parame parameter I specify uh, GPT4. And third parameter is the primary one. That, that's the content of the prompt. So I, I get it from a field. Uh, and to, for the content itself, there are two choices. One is you can give a plain text. Uh, print, te print text with natural language. And another one is you can use a JSON object. So the example I have here, the JSON object have a key messages and the value is a, a vector of JSON object. So the first one is the, the previous prompt. The second one is the, the previous, com um, pre previous completion. The third one is the current prompt. Uh, so you can have a multiple set in there. So remember the sliding window three for the app, app assistant. I, I have three, right? So if you have more than three, three chat before, right? Then he, you will see the, the three previous most recent uh, prompt and the uh, completion show up in the JSON structure. Good. For the data table specify this, so this, this one have uh, three options. So you specify the, the table occurrence to be including in a DDL. You can pick from list or you can specify by name or you can then inject your customer DDL. For example, you use a dump DDL I showed you before and then, then you modify it. Then you can use the customized DDL to inject it instead of they did generate a new one. Uh, in case if you see some problem, you don't want to go to field annotation to, to change it, regenerate. So you can use a custom, customized DDL. And here is the, the specified tables. So what you need to do just like before, you put a checkbox on the table currency you need. And you might notice there are five more tables in here than the app assistant. That be, that's because the app assistant create five more tables. And app assistant is smart enough. There is no reason to send the app assistant schema <laughs> to the LLM. So we don't need to waste your money to, to do that. <laughs> and the, the actions, uh, there are five actions. So basically that, that's the exact same, you, exact, exact same five options possible to pick uh, as the app assistant. 
And Quarry Scope is uh, the exact same. The database only or non limit. Right. And stream more on off also the same. Response is where you can store your response. So the response you can store it in the financial field or in a variable. Yeah. And prompt parameter is optional. In this example, I set the I set the seed to 101. The, the, the format basically is a, just, is a simple JSON format. So, so I, I set the C number to 101. Now, this one for GPT actually, this, this is a recent, recent improvement they make, they made in during the December, uh, sorry, during November last year. So once you set the C number, you will set the, the seed, the seed of the random number, random number generation of uh, GPT. Yeah. So if you, if you need, in sometimes if your solution, if you want the most deterministic results, you can set the C number to a fixed number. And you, also you can set another parameter called temperature. Uh, for GPT, the temperature is zero means the most deterministic and 1.0 means most creative. Uh, and the four different LLM actually they are different definition. Uh, so some of them from minus one to one. So, so if when you use a different a different LA, you need to check their document. Then, but again, this one the the prompt parameter is optional, so you, you don't need to set it if you don't need. Okay. The web viewer script is also optional, so the the app assistant basically uses the web viewer script to communicate with web viewer, and web direct can leverage that as well. So once you once you you kind of set up your solution, start chat with the database. Uh, sometimes uh, you might need to debug, or maybe you just curious what's what ha what happening in between the LLM and the Draco database engine. So we have this uh, debug log mechanism. So here is a screenshot like uh, I did before. So you can see in the exchange, you can see the the SQL, the SQL statement. Uh, that, that coming from the LLM to Fabric Draco database engine. We, we have a, we create a, a new script step, LLM debug log. So you can use that to control when, when to start, turn it, when to turn on, when to turn off. And you also, if you don't like the default name, you can save to any, the different file name you like. You can also set in a purpose mode if you like. Okay. Okay. So, the next topic is embedding vectors. Uh, so embedding that vector is actually is a very exciting feature uh, from LLM. So what embedding vector is a numerical representation of uh, some text or document in a continuous vector space. Uh, so this definition, technically speaking, needs to update. Uh, majority of LLM actually going to support multiple models. Uh, so what that means is the Besides the Dutch language model, it can you well some of them already right now. You can support like an image, audio, video. So so that then the, the numerical representation could be some be beyond the text. But however, in this section, we just stick with this definition. The one I show you actually the embedding vector actually means some text. And, and to get the embedding vector into a FileMaker database, you need to create a field to store it. Uh, so there are two options. The, the, that example I show you here, the binary embedding, in binary embedding field, I create it as a simple container. So if that's a simple, if that's a container, the, the embedding vector will store in binary format. Uh, and if you create, the, like the embedding here, and create as a text field, the, Embedding vector stored there will be text format. I highly recommend you use the binary format because the binary format, the, the processing time is much faster and it costs less in storage. And here is, the, is an embedded vector I got from um, open AI before, you see quite a lot of numbers, and actually it does have a lot of numbers. So the dimension is 1536, 1536. Yeah. So I cannot print all the numbers for you, that could be more than 10 pages. And it, the, for now we store that as a double. So they are 15, for the particular vector, they, 
there are 15, 36 bubbles. So we have tried to use the 14 point, but the, the, sometimes the calculation seems to have some, lose some precision. So for now, we just uh, cite it uh, to the results. So, so just use a little bit more no storage and memory for you. Uh, and if you notice that the, 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 you see the number are all quite small. You don't see any number bigger than one. Now, or small than minus one. The reason is uh, from open AI, all the embedding vector, uh, you get a normalized. A normalized embed, embedding vector, basic, normalized vector simply means the length of the vector is one. Uh, so the number basically you cannot, if you see something bigger than one, that means that the, the embedding, embedding vector is not normalized. And the, please pay attention, don't mix, mix the embedding vector from different, from different models. The, so, Draco database engine allow you to, to connect to multiple LLM at the same time. But, the, it's fine, say you have one table connect to, to get embedding vector from one LLM and another table to get from another LLM and you do a comparison. The, but, please don't mix them. You mix them, you might get some, Unexpected result. And here is a script step you can use to re retrieve the embedding vector. So LLM embedded first parameter again the same is is the account. Second parameter model you need to specify model to retrieve to get embedding vector. Uh, uh, please pay attention. Here I use the text embedding eta zero zero two. So even you talk to OpenAI, you don't you don't get embedding vector from GPT-3, GPT-4. It's a text embedding eta 002. And the third one, third parameter input text is where your natural language text you want to generate embedding vector. And the, the last one, the answer is where you want to store the your embedding vector. So you can store in a field or in a variable. If you store the field is a container field, the embedding vector will be in binary format. If a text field, that will be text format. And if you specify a variable, the variable one will be text format. And correspondingly, we have another, we have a calculation function to get embedding vector. So if you use a calculation function to get, by default, we, we return a binary format for you because binary format is faster. Okay, so basically, if you get you use the, this the script step or calc function, get the embedding vector. The in what is a fifteen thirty six, so it's so definitely high dimension and dense. Okay. And because we support two format, so we provide the two calc function to to help you convert uh, uh, between these two format. If if you have to, for example, if you want to export, then you probably want to export with the text format. So then you the embedding. Embedding data as a as file will convert text format into binary format. Embedded data as text will convert from binary format to text format. And as you need to, to get embedding vector for the table. So we provide another script step to help you to say use one one, one script step and we'll get the whole all record for the table for you. So the syntax is very similar to the LLM embedding vector. So LLM bulk embedding, and the parameters are very similar. But it, the difference is uh, this one we use a dispatch queue multi three and try to get the embedding vector for all records in your table as soon as possible. However, most LLM providers have throttling mechanisms. For example, OpenAI have a, 8191 token limit and for tier one account have 500 RPM limit. Yeah, yeah. So, but you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. If we encounter this kind of rate limited token limited, we are, we are trying to back off, slow down a little bit, but still try to, to, to get all your, your embedding vector, uh, with one script step. Unless it encounters some photo error. Otherwise, you will, you will try to finish it in one shot. Okay, so the next topic is the cosine similarity. Since right now, now you have an embedding vector uh, in your database, then you can you can try to process it, and then then you can you a lot of time you want to measure similarity between two vectors. Uh, so cosine similarity is the most popular 
algorithm to do that right now. So there are several different ones. For example, the Manhattan distance, the Cartesian distance. So, and we implement the calculation function for you, uh, just called cosine similarity to compare two vectors. And I make some illustration here in two dimension. I apologize, I'm not able to draw a 1536 dimension for you. <laughs> <laughs> So I would just use, just like you learn in probably in, 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 in high school. So uh, for similar vectors, uh, uh, theta is close to zero. The cosine similarity were close to one. That, that means they are very, uh, very similar or could be identical. And for orthogonal vectors, uh, theta close to 90 degree, the cosine similarity will be close to zero. For opposite vectors, uh, theta close to 180 degree, the cosine similarity will be close to minus one. Uh, so simply put, the, the gentleman range for cosine similarity you expect from the calc function is between minus one and one, ex inclusively. And we made a decision for you. The, only normalized vectors that store in the Feynman database. And let me explain why we make this decision, the scientific evidence of this. <laughs> so if you don't, not for me with the math formula, don't worry. I, I'm not going to give you a quiz, but I just want to explain <laughs> why, why we make that decision for you. <laughs> if you disagree, <laughs> feel free to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so for the for the denominator, the, you see the uh, summation i from one to n, and the, it, it sum up the a sub i square and the make a square root of it. So what it does this this complicated calculation is to calculate the length of vector a, and if the vector a is a normalized vector, the after all this calculation, the result is one. And the same thing for vector B. And remember I told you that OpenAI will return normalized vector. And majority of LLM, LLM provider give you normalized vector. So why I need to waste your computer power or energy to do this calculation? The, the value I already know. <laughs> and the one times one and divide it. Right. So, so we can save that. Right. So just calculate the, the, the top part, the A sub i times B, B sub i and sum it up. Uh, from i equal to one to n. Ma mathematically, this, w this one is so called a dot product or dot score. Uh, so there are now another, another one like a cross product, but cosine similarity need a dot product. But think about that, even that one, the for open AI case, just a simple, just a simple cosine similarity between two vectors, it needed to make 1536 multiplication and 1535 addition. Okay. And you think about it when you do, if you want to do this for your, all your records, you might have a million records. So that could be also tons of uh, calculation. So for that, we try to use hardware accelerator if your computer, if your computer device has. Okay. So for example, if you have a AVX2 from Intel or, or AMD, we will try to use AVX2. Okay. And if you have a AVX512 from Intel, we will try to use AVX512. And if you are use ARM64 with Neon, we will try to use Neon. If you don't have this, don't worry, it still works, just slower. But once you upgrade, you will fall faster. Okay, so the next topic is semantic search. Yeah. Since you, since you, right now you have embedding vectors and uh, you, you have, we have this cosine similarity. So we can use that one to do the semantic search. So semantic search in more than keyword search is based on the meaning of the natural language. And then remember the cosine similarity between, and compared to two vectors. And these vectors are from, the, from LLM. So they, that one can actually can tell the meaning difference between the, and two taxes. So we, we use the cosine similarity for the contextual reverence. And a lot of the time, you probably say you use the Finnick Pro or Go and connect to server. So the server basically on remote side. And when you want to do the cosine similarity, the Draco engine protocol will check whether it's favorable 
to perform some semantic search on server side or client side. So, for example, if the server is is not an overloaded, say the CPU usage under twenty five percent, and you you do have a lot of records, and majority of them are not downloaded yet. Yeah, so it will it will implicitly yeah, perform that remotely for you to get the, the semantic search. Yeah, otherwise, you download all the record into your local machine and perform that. And here yeah, is the example of the 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 semantic search script step. Yeah. So so this one the uh, actually this one we just recently updated according to early e ETS feedback. Uh, so uh, let me just read in English. Yeah, that probably it look complicated, but not really that complicated. So what this one is uh, looking semantic search for a movie about uh, monsters for Oracle on the the movie the binary binary embedding vector, uh, and and I'm looking for the top five. Right. Yeah. So previously we only can specify a text and and. And to perform semantic search on 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 certain embedded vectors, but but uh, according to the the suggestion is uh, sometimes you already get the embedding vector, so you know this is a pattern I'm looking for. I have embedding vector. Then why I need to to generate embedding vector for this pattern again? Uh, so that's the reason you come. You see the first one, the query text about. Uh, and the second account name, just like you saw before. And third one, the model is in, because of four embedding vector. So for OpenAI, I use the text embedding eta002. And pay attention, that model needs to be the same model used to bulk embedding or embedding for your, your, your record in, in, the, in the table. And the text is quite straightforward. So I'm looking for movie about monsters. The specified record will have two choices. You can choose to do a semantic search search on on the whole table, all records of the table, or you can and can do that for a kernel function. So if you have function, you you have million record, you already narrow down the function uh, to maybe two hundred, right? Then no reason you need to perform on the million record again. Yeah. And and the target field, basically the field which you generated in bad impact before. And return count, we just say that. So here, if you click, click the parameter, you will see the, the option for you. So specify record, basically you can pick either all, record, all records or current function. And specify target field, you basically specify the field uh, which you, you already have the embedded vector generated. Uh, so you can try that if, you, if the embedding vector is on container field in binary format, you are much faster. And text form form is still works, but slower. Uh, the return count you specify number for the return count. So like a five, I specify in the case it's top five. And you also can specify the condition for cosine similarity. But the default one is greater than, and you can pick a greater than or equal, uh, less than, less than or equal, or even simply equal. Uh, and the cosine similarity, you also can specify the threshold you, you want. <laughs> so say maybe you want to specify 0 0.9 for really close. And on the other hand, if you you, are, you want to check outliner, the anomaly detection, you might be want to set the minus 0 0.9, not minus 0 0.8. Okay, so here is a quick demo about semantic search. Uh, so I have uh, more than 12,000 records. Uh, uh, for movie database, and each one have the description of the movie. Yeah. So the plot field basic description. I generally both the text for uh, the the text format embedding and binary format in, embedding. You, you don't need to do both. Yeah. So I do that for testing and for illustration purpose. Yeah. So you can see the plot, the description describe the movie, and some of them actually are not in English. Okay, so because I, I do have, I already have the embedding, so I can use a script to perform the, the semantic search. So, so for this simple script, basically I, I'm looking for a movie about cars and on the binary field, and I'm looking for top five. I also calculate the, uh, the millisecond spend to, doing this uh, semantic search. This was done on the M1 Max uh, MacBook Pro.
Okay, so let's click, click it, and you can see that's a finish in the 0 0.9557 second. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And you can, you can see that the, the thing, is, if you use the regular expression over, over keyword search, you cannot find it. Right. The, like a driver that has a taxi driver. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's it for a demo. So the next topic is the retrieval, retrieval augmented uh, generation, the IAG. Yeah. So this is to chat with document. And we implement the IAG as a server. So IAG itself is a server. And you can have IAG on the same machine of, of your FileMaker database server or on a different machine. So say, say that in the development that I, I have IAG server, FileMaker database server, and the FileMaker Pro, even debug version, I can run it without problem on M1 Max Pro. And it, it will allow user to ask question to the, the, to the knowledge, knowledge document, just as similar to the, the chat with the database. Hmm. And the good thing about IAG is it, it eliminates the LLM hallucination. Uh, so if it, it doesn't know, it just says I don't know. Uh, so that's a good thing about it. Hmm. However, if uh, there are too many don't knows, right, <laughs> that is not that useful. So, so we create a script step so the admin can, can dynamic on demand probably to solve those FAQ and you can, you can update it with either, either, uh, print text or with a PDF file. So here is a script step. So in LLM IG space add, the first, again, the first, the first one is account name. And, and, and because it, this talking to my IG server, not to, not to GPT. And so I have a account IAG point to my, my local host. And the space ID, I, I, I set it for the Bento analogy. Uh, we used to have a product called Bento. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably familiar with it. Uh, and the, the data source you can specify from the text directory or from a PDF file. Uh, so f when out the file, we, we, in, at, at this moment, we only support PDF. Okay, so here is the, the, the standard script step, the file, file dialog. Okay, so the next demo I'm going to show you is the, how, to, how to start this IG server quickly. Uh, on, the, on the left hand side, left -hand side uh, here is the readme file we included in the server package. So it documented each detail step to, uh, to set up and run the IG server. On, on the right hand side, uh, the top one is a, a server installation on, on Mac, and you can see the, the, the directory structure. And the lower corner actually is the terminal window. We will show you the progress uh, of the setup. Uh, uh, so, so we, we use a Conda to set up, to set up the environment for Python. So, so Conda, Conda and the virtual environment are the two popular ones to encapsulate the Python environment. And so here we just simply use the Conda to create workspace. And then we install the Python 3.9 for, for the workspace. And, and then we install the dependence library. Dependence library take a little bit, time, little bit time to, to install. It take like a couple of minutes, but that depends on your computer and those network speed. However, this is actually, this is just done, done once. Once that done up, done, you finish it one time, the capture in the counter environment, the next time you can just simply start it, you will be quick. So after you install that, before you run the server, I suggest you open the settings file and change your setting according to your need. So I highly recommend you you turn on the the PKI verification SSL if you run the server on a different machine, even for development. That's a general security purpose. And if you have a then if you have PDF file in in the in the in in the folder of the IG server, it can load it when it starts. So you will, you will generate the embedding vectors and the cache them and ready to, to answer the question. Okay, so now, that, now the server is starting. 
So since the RG server is up and running, I'm going to open the FileMaker Pro to to chat with the RG server. So let's take a look at the script there. So you can see the similar one, but this the account LL account is RG point to my local host, and. I can start asking questions about Bento. Say, uh, Bento was designed for Mac OS, and we can continue ask more Bento questions. And I ask how many library templates the Bento comes with. So we find out there are twenty library templates in the Bento. Now I'm going to ask in something totally unrelated. I'm asking who is the best, best, the best guitar ball player. Uh, what? Well, Bento definitely done. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so now we we want to teach it. <laughs> so that like we add the Michael Jordan is the best player. Uh, so let's add in. The, you can see the, from from the the top window. Uh, and we, when we we ask question again, you say, oh, Michael Jordan is the the best the best player. Uh, so what? You, so when you set up the IG you have space, actually, well, you you can put your name. Uh, you are your best. <laughs> Just don't add my name. <laughs> okay, so next topic is open source LLM. And so there are a lot of open source LLM, and some of them are pretty good. So if you are interested, the HackingFace.com is a hub. Uh, so it has a, actually, it has more than LL, LLM models. It has a lot of models, and also with a lot of data set. Uh, so, good thing about that is with the data set, uh, you Potentially, you can find him, uh, find him LLM for for your special purpose. Okay, so there are several kinds of LLM and L model you might interested from open source. The first one probably is a sentence transformer. What sentence transform does is to generate an embedding vector for you. So we have tested several of them, and these two seems to be good. And uh, but the first thing is remember I told you that we need to use normalized embedding vector. We only store, want to store normalized embedding vectors in FileMaker database. So, so please, please get get a model with a normalized embedding vector. Most of them are, and some of them have option. If they are option, you check the option. You only want normalized embedding vectors. And another thing to pay attention is the maxima sequence. For example, the O mini LM L12 V2, the maxima sequence is 256 characters. What that mean, means is if you send a text more than 256 characters to generate embedding vector, it will truncate anything after 256. So you need to pay attention about that. <laughs> Otherwise, you might get some unexpected results. And, and another thing, another thing is the size of LLM. So for this one is 120 megabytes. And the second one, the multi QA mini LLM L6 cosine V1, the maximum sequence doubles is 512. Actually, the, the demo I show you, the IC server it is using this, this open source LLM instead of open AI. If you want to use open AI, you just switch in the setting. You will use open AI. But since this one is pretty good, they, it, it, it's useful. So, but however, that's up to you for choice. And this model actually is, is a fine tuned version for cosine similarity. And the size is smaller. So the both model actually, the, embed, the embedding vector dimension size is 384. So it's much smaller, much smaller than OpenAI. We, we, just like uh, the IG server, we provide the document, the readme document, also the Python script. So if you follow, follow it, it should be easily, quickly bring up your own sentence transformer for, for either of, either of these models, or you find a newer model better fits for you. And here is the link that, that if you are interested to, to bring up your own sentence transform server, the expert, expert.net has a pretty good document to compare the current available sentence transformers. So because time limited, so I don't demo this one. Okay. 
And another kind kind of LLM in my interest in to set up is, is like Open Chat 3.5. Uh, so which is a leaderboard LLM for chat and converting natural language to SQL. So so the normally the, the seven billion billion parameter one is good for, good enough for general purpose. And according to its evaluation on the hugging face side, when SQL evolved, the, the, this, the OpenShed 3.5 outperformed GPT 3.5 triple, but of course not as good as the GPT 4. Right. However, it needs high end CUDA support. So if you don't have high end CUDA support, first, if you don't have un enough memory, when you try to run, it, it will give you error out of memory. And, and if an, if you have enough memory, but still not enough of CUDA, I mean the NVIDIA GPU support, then, then the response could be slow. And again, we provide the, the readme document also uh, have a Python script. So you, to help you to start, uh, uh, the, your own open chat uh, server, if you like. So because time limit, so I don't demo this to you. So, yeah. Okay. So, we have went through quite a lot. Remember in the beginning, we were talking about the key tech ways. So you, you have seen the chat with the database from the, the app assistant. And technically speaking, you can directly use the LLM prompt to, to chat with the database if you like. Uh, and you see the embedding vectors. So you know how to get the binary, you, how, how to use the LLM embedded or LLM book embedded to save the embedding vector into a FileMaker database. So if you create a field uh, with, of text field, it will be text format. If you create a field of container field, you, it will be binary format. Uh, and you, you know how to do semantic search. Basically, just use LLM sub semantic search. And you can, you can give it the text against a table with embedding vector. Or you can give it an embedding vector, a pattern with the embedding vector to compare. And you know how to set up the IG server and, and then have it, have it cache the PDL file to answer questions. And in case if, if you want update anytime, you can use the FileMaker script uh, to add new information into it. Okay, so please join our careers community to participate in our AI discussion. Together, let's be all incredible things. <laughs> Thank you. So I cannot wait to see innovative solution from you. So thank you. So now for question and answer. So any questions? Questions? Back here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> to uh, vectorize your data, is there any way to do that locally without having to send it to a service? Um, yes. It, it, so it, if it, you want to get an embedding back data, embedding vector, right? So. So if you, if you run the sentence transformer, right, remember I showed you the sentence transformer, you bring up the sentence transformer server locally, then you, then you can just talk to it, you create an account to point to the, your, your local host endpoint, then you will be able to get an embedding vector. But I thought the vectorization also had to do with what uh, model you were using. Yes. The, so, so, so the, the remember I I I show you I show you the the IG right the IG the the vector the ve vector actually is from the particular uh, particular sentence transform model so it's fixed uh, uh, so that's the reason I that I suggest don't mix embedding vector from different LLM. Yeah. Yeah. We had one back one back here. I'm gonna run back. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> <In Hawaii. laughs> 
the FileMaker data, is that limited to a file on the server? Can, can, you, can you pull from multiple files on the server? Can you, can you source from multiple servers? You mean FileMaker server, right? Yes. Right, but yeah. the, when you run this in, in the file, right, like there's a, there's a table and okay. it has... Right, with the data yeah. to, to, to work on. Yes. That, that, Can that be located anywhere, any server, yeah. multiple so, servers? So, so uh, you, you mean you mean the in, in, where to store embedding vector? Yeah. Y yes. So you can you specify as long as you can access the the, the table and uh, you you create a field in there, so you, you should be able to store there. Okay. So any yeah. server, mm. any table, as That's long right. as you specify. Right. And then and. As long as you have privilege and you can access it, of yeah. course. Can you specify multiple multiple tables? Uh, not right now. Multiple table, you, you need a special one by one. If you have a special case, it, there's no. Thank you. So, any more questions? Would it be possible to set up a RAG um, server, like in-house to test this without having to have subscriptions to an outside LLM? LLM, LLM? Like, uh, like if you want to test it in-house. I see. So, so the one I show you actually, I set up I set up locally on my MacBook Pro, and the only thing I use outside is is the I use the I use the GPT-4 to do the summary or final answer. So put this way, say if, if you have, you, you say you, 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 you bring up your own open chat server in-house, then you don't need to send to GPT-4 for summary. It's just sent to your G, the open chat 3.5. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically why I show you the embedded method already get locally from my own open source. Sentence transformer. Yeah. Thank you. One more. When do we get it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so actually, we, already, we have an ETS version, and that's our PM running. Is that running? You, <laughs> you got to bribe me. Just uh, no, we're, <laughs> like Wade said, we're testing all these out. These are, these are things that we're, um, we're trying to figure out what's the easiest way to bring all these technologies to you in the most FileMaker way possible. Right, so we're experimenting. These guys have done, Wade and his team has done an amazing job. This is a lot of work, and honestly, in, the, in a short amount of time. So I think it's really amazing what they're doing. Again, we're trying to bring it as quickly as possible, as best as to you. So join the group. Join the group if you want to test this out. <laughs>